Uh, I've been working on my car here. <clears throat> um, I haven't really posted anything about it, but um, it was a 94, well it is a 94 Z28. I ended up putting T-tops on it. I think it's got like 100,000 miles, 110, something like that. That was a super challenging thing and to get it to stop leaking because like everybody says, oh, it's super simple to do and it's not going to leak. It was leaking like a waterfall. So I don't know about that. Like I wish I would have left the hard top on. So my recommendations, anybody thinking about doing a T-top conversion themselves without totally welding everything up and like having exact measurements, I absolutely wouldn't do it. Because I had to use a ton of caulking, which I ended up putting it in the wrong spots. And I could have just put it, left it on the T-tops, but it looks like crap. Like, look at that. Like, it doesn't leak into the car anymore, but it looks horrible. And it just doesn't look right. I'm going to probably end up having to send it off to somebody to have them button it up right and get all the silicone off that I put on there since it's like bonded to the paint that I sprayed up there. At a far though, it doesn't look that bad. I painted my quarter panels back here. Those didn't turn out too well. That's what happens when you're drunk and trying to do body work. But the paint did. Painted my fenders, painted my front bumper, which turned out pretty good. Shined up my headlights that were really crappy looking. Threw some ZR1 <clears throat> wheels um, on here from uh, OE Wheels, I'm assuming. I think the front ones, uh, I had some original ones somewhere that I think were stamped GM. Those are obviously replicas. I think they all are. I don't, I don't, I think they're all replicas. I think the GM ones that I got were these 10 spokes. I don't think these say anything on them. I don't know. I don't feel like touching them, they're dirty. But I got some little Mickey Thompson slicks. I think they're Mickey Thompson. Or Hoosier. Hoosier slicks, whatever. Same thing. On there. Came with the rims. Painted my spoiler that I got from uh, the spoiler company. That turned out really good. I actually like the spoiler. It fits really well for something that's super cheap. Has good lines and everything. It's a little off, but like, you know, what do you expect for like a hundred something bucks? I'm really satisfied with it. I think it looks good. Everything turned out well. The screws for the light, though, for this from the spoiler company, the little fake SLP light, I'm not too happy with, but overall, good product. <sighs> Here's the other quarter panel that I painted. I still got shit all over the car. I think I'm going to wrap this because it's got a chip out of it. I'm not, I don't feel like painting it, but I might paint it and clean it up. I'm not too worried about it. But I um, painted my hood. Absolutely would never recommend this hood. It's a Duraflex hood. Worst hood that I ever put on a vehicle. It is just absolutely garbage to the extremes. But uh, yeah, I started putting my headers on that I got from eBay. The tubes look like they look really thick compared to the other ones that I got. I don't know what size tubes they were that they said the tubes were, but they look pretty massive. And uh, I don't know. Uh, they definitely look massive, but here's all the shit that I had to take off. I was gonna try to save this, but I just ended up cutting it because, like, I just I don't feel like dicking around with trying to finagle that off. Same thing for the tube. Here, I ended up cutting that off. Couldn't get my oxygen sensor out, so I cut that off and so I get a better grip on it. But uh, to anybody that's never put headers on an LT1, I remember my first set that I put on a long time ago on my 93, which seemed like it was a lot easier to put on. But uh, it's been a long time. Same thing for the front end conversion that I did. It was, it's probably been well over about 10 years maybe since I've done it and uh, right around 10 years it seemed a lot funner and a lot simpler then being the first time that I was doing it and 
doing everything now, I absolutely hate it, and this will probably be the last car that I ever put together. But just getting older, I think I was 18 then, or right around 18, 20s, something like that. Now I'm 32, so it's been a while, and it's not fun <laughs> anymore. My back hurts. I can barely do anything anymore. <laughs> but um, to everybody that wants to know exactly what you have to do to put the headers on... You obviously have to take both exhaust manifolds off. You have to take off the pollution. Well, you don't have to take off the pollution pump, but <clears throat> I took all the pollution stuff off since I got like just straight race headers. They're not the pollution ones, <clears throat> which I would just recommend getting those. It doesn't matter. You know, a lot simpler. But I took off all this stuff. I took off some of the brackets. Took off this little doodad. You got to take the alternator off. You got to take the steering knuckle off, the shaft for the that goes to the rack and pinion. You have to unhook your oxygen sensors, you have to take out your spark plugs, pop off your spark plug wires, um, and the pass or the driver's side one <clears throat> you can put in through the top. I think the passenger side one you have to put in through the bottom. It's been a while since I've done it. But <clears throat> also you have to, there's two bolts that hook up to that pollution pump, or the, not a pollution pump, but whatever this little thing is that hooks up to the back of the intake. This thing. Take that off so your exhaust manifold will come off so it's not dangling there. I was in a hurry so I just cut it. I don't, I don't care. You know, I was going to save some of the parts so later on down the road maybe they're worth some money because they're original parts, but... I'll probably end up being dead before that happens. <clears throat> but, I got another rear end to put in it. I think I'm going to put 342 gears in this one. I had 373s in my other one, which I really liked. But, I'm kind of on the edge between going with the 342 and just maybe putting 410s in it. And calling it a day. I'm not really looking for top speed anymore. You know, a long time ago I was, but... <clears throat> it's more about quickness anymore than like racing I guess like top speed plus uh, there's so much sketchy shit that can happen with such an old car going 150 140 miles per hour you know and anything can happen something can break and then you're just dead this thing is not going to protect you from anything if you get into a crash you're for sure dead if you're going 140 in it the doors are paper thin the roof's fucking a death trap itself it's just like being in a little aluminum pop can and somebody steps on it. There's nothing that's going to save you. And me being, getting older, I'm feeling fragile. So, but I might get another car. I was thinking about trying to trade this off for like a C, like a wrecked C5 Corvette or maybe like a an LS1 GTO or something. If I can get some good track times on it and maybe have somebody trade me for... One of their beat up cars and then I'll bring it back to life like I did this one. It looked absolutely horrible when I got it. Like, I don't have any of the body parts in here anymore, but I changed the doors, the fenders, the front bumper hood, I painted the back quarter panels, painted the spoiler, painted the, uh, the fucking, the Berger panel thing here, whatever you want to call it. This little panel that has the Camaro on it. Um, I did not paint the back bumper. I should have. It's got some spider cracks in it. Thought it was good when I put it on and then I cleaned it up and it's got a few spider cracks on the back of the paint, which I'm not happy about, but to each their own. I think if I have somebody paint it, like they redo these quarter panels since mine's kind of a little wavy, like I said, you know, don't drink and do body work, <clears throat> you know, you'll be better off, but I kind of want it to look a little bit better if I'm going to drive it around for a while. But I went to go buy my SLP uh, little air intake lid. I think I was getting it from Hawks Motorsports or some shit like that. It was it was something speed engineering, one or the other, and um, ordered it off of eBay for a hundred bucks, hundred something, hundred and thirty, hundred and hundred something, hundred and six. I don't know. It's been a while, and uh, I never got it. <laughs> 
they said SLP was having issues with their molds and them getting their products out and a bunch of nonsense. So I gave it about, I think it was two or three months and I, uh, I ended up just saying, forget it. I don't want it. And just refund me my money. So that's that scenario. I got a bunch of other stuff to put on this car. I'll, I'll make some more videos. Like I had some drilled and slotted rotors, ceramic brake pads. Um, what else do I got? I got some new old stock shocks, struts and uh, rear shocks. I got the Eibach lowering springs. I got the relocation brackets for the control arms that I had on another car that I sold. I'm going to hook up the ram air. I'm going to do the knock sensor mod so it doesn't read any knock from the engine. I'm going to maybe put this Transgo uh, shift kit slash it makes it a manual valve body for the most part like in the 93 transmissions you have full control over being in which gear you want to be in instead of like the electronic ones that if you're in first gear you floor it it won't bounce off the rev limiter it'll shift into second gear on its own but still be in first <clears throat> like you know what i mean it's like with any new car if you have if, like a manual shift like shifter knob like <clears throat> on your center console and it says sports mode and it's got negative and positive if you leave it in first gear and positive and you still floor it it'll it'll shift through all the gears no matter what even though that it's in manual mode it won't stick to the gear so <clears throat> i like to have the manual valve body because if you're cruising down the road and you're in like who knows second third gear something like that I mean, you will depending on what your rear end gear is but you can just drop it down into first and it's kind of like if you just fucking revved it up and dropped the clutch while you're while you're coasting, not good for the transmission, but uh, if you're trying to race somebody and like they got a stick car, you can get the jump, like jump on them just as good as they're getting the jump on you. But <clears throat> I also think I'm gonna buy a little stall for it, maybe a little 2500 or something, and throw it in there. Let's see. I never had a stall in a car. I I don't quite understand them, but uh, I'm going to probably put one in this one and then. After I put all that shit on there, I'm going to take it to the track, get some numbers, and show all the clowns that are LS1 fans, even though I, I have an LS1 myself, which I'm not impressed with at all. It's a 2000 Trans Am. <clears throat> but um, anyways, I'll get some numbers on this and show everybody that they're not as slow and underrated in horsepower as everybody wants to dog them to be. So... I'll do some more videos of me putting some more shit together and stuff like that. Maybe putting stuff back on the car. <laughs> Hooking up the ram air and stuff. But for the most part, that's that. You know, it is what it is.